Hi everybody, in this video, we're going to take a break from looking at HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and writing code and look at something a little less intense. We're going to look at how to configure the Atom Code Editor for web development and all the variety of plugins and packages that everyone has created that you can use to make your life a little easier when building things in HTML. So let's get started. So one of the things you'll know about Atom is out of the box, it's a pretty nice, fully functional code editor, but you can actually extend it with a whole lot of functionality that others have created for you. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about five of those packages that I use that you might have also seen in some of my videos as well. So let me just quickly walk through the packages and what their website looks like, and then we will look at a demo in Atom itself so you can see it for yourself, so you can see it live. So let's start with an easy one. The first one's a file type icons package. I have a lot of files that I often like to deal with, and after a while, seeing the same default file icon gets a little boring. So the file type icons package kind of gives you a special icon depending on the file type, and they keep adding new files as well. So if for whatever reason you have a file format that still gets a generic icon, you can either make a modification yourself or just wait for an update where that icon gets displayed. But the nice thing is you get a variety of icons, which is kind of cool. Now, we're going to get to my favorite package of all, and one that I've probably received the most questions about on how I have it configured, that is Atom HTML Preview. So when I'm writing HTML, I'm writing CSS, or writing JavaScript, I don't like to jump from my code editor to a separate window or an alt tab into a separate, separate pane. I like to just see everything in line, especially for a lot of the simple demos that I like to create. And what HTML Preview does is exactly that. It allows you to have your Atom environment configured into two halves. One half is your code that you're writing. The other half is a live preview of the changes you're making. And this is something that we'll demo in, in a few moments. So the second one is CSS Comb. When I'm writing CSS, I often just like to write it in whatever order I happen to be thinking about of whatever element I'm styling. Now, that's not often the best way of arranging your styles. There's a lot of best practices and guides written out there on how to properly format your CSS for readability, maintainability, and all of that. And CSS Comb allows you to kind of just deal with it automatically. You know, this plugin kind of goes through your CSS, makes the modifications on your behalf, and you're better off for using it. The next plugin is the color picker. And by the way, I keep calling it plugin, but it's also called a package. So when I say plugin, you think of it as a package. So the color picker package is, as the name implies, allows you to get a nice color picker UI in your code editor where you can choose whatever color you want. It's a lot better than writing values manually or having to copy and paste from some other application when you can use a color picker inline your code editor very easily. And the last package is Atom Beautify. This is one of those things where you kind of don't know what you're missing out on until you use it, and then you never, never really want to avoid using it. So when you're writing HTML at, you know, or CSS or JavaScript, I try to make sure the spacing is right, the tab order, and all these things are properly done. But every now and then, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And what Atom Beautify does is it auto formats your code. You know, select like all your code that you want modified or formatted, and it'll take care of it all for you. So that was a you know, quick overview of it. Let's look at how it's all looks like. So let's start my favorite one. I'm going to start with HTML preview. So notice here I have a simple HTML page, you know, nothing fancy going on here. But the interesting thing is, look at the right hand pane over here. You can actually see that I have an example that is currently being displayed. And the nice thing is I can make changes to my example and see how it gets affected in real time. Like for example, let's change the padding from 150 to 50. And you can see that the example gets updated pretty pretty quickly and the way you bring it up is pretty simple you go to your once you have an uh, an atom package installed just go to packages go to preview html and just select enable preview and once you've done that you'll see a preview displaying right here and so next package we're going to look at is the color picker one since that since i'm currently on the css style rule that has a style property called background color and a color value this gray looks a uh, looks a little dull let's kind of change it to something else i'm going to right click on my color value just get color picker and once I've done that, you'll see a really nice UI that comes up that allows you to choose between RGB, hex, HSL, HSV, and BEC, and then change the color that you want using any of the various sliders that you have here. So let's pick a, let's pick a nice yellow color to go with the, the yellow color of the hexagon that we're currently displaying. I'm not gonna say it's gonna look great because I'm just ad hocking it right now, but we'll go for it anyway. All right, this looks somewhat decent, and I'm gonna enter it in here, and notice that now your color is a bright yellow. Okay, I'm not gonna say this is an improvement or what we had, but it at least gives you an example of what the color picker allows you to do. It allows you to easily pick a color. It doesn't help you to pick a good color because that goes up, that's up to you and the taste that you bring to the table on this. So it, it's not magic after all. So I'm gonna undo this and go back to the gray just to avoid irritating you all for the rest of the video. 
And so next, let's look at the look at the markup, look at the HTML. Things look pretty neat overall, right? Like I, I'd say this is pretty nice. But the thing is, you'll always miss something if you aren't really paying attention. So I'm going to use the add and beautify package. So go to package, add and beautify, hit beautify. And once I've done that, notice that some of my content was indented a little bit more. There's a little space between the style rules. And there's just things that are just basically done to make your code more readable and look kind of look more professional if you were to share it to other people. And I make sure to always run Adam Beautify before I share any code externally, just because it's a good idea and it's free. It's something that takes very little effort and I think most of the time it is a very, very good job. So the last thing we're gonna look at is CSS. So here I have some CSS style rules and inside I have these properties. And the way I often, like I mentioned earlier, the way I define the style properties isn't really based on some order. It's just based on the order I want to make some modifications to an element, which often may not be the best arrangement, especially if we were to look, look back at this like a week or a month from now or, or share it with someone else who has no idea what I'm currently doing. And that's where the CSS comb package really comes in. So I'm going to go to packages, go to CSS comb, I'm going to hit run. And once I've done that, notice that my style rules and the properties inside them have been modified a little bit, and I'd say they've been modified for the better. Properties that are related to, for example, the layout in the box model are grouped together. Things that are related to the appearance of things are grouped together. And the spacing is really nice. It makes my CSS much more readable. And I said this was the last thing we're gonna look at, but the other last thing is, of course, the, the file type icons package, where you can now see that all my various H well, file types, you know, a lot of HTML files have the default HTML icon, but you can see that there's a JS file here with a JS icon and a globe icon for some HTML files that are not HTM, and so on. So that's a kind of nice, very subtle touch. Doesn't really change how your application is built, or I don't want to say it makes you more productive most of the time, but it is a nice thing to have, especially if you have a lot of files that look, look very similar. So with that, that's pretty much all we have to look at. You know, Atom is one of those things that is very extensible and I only showed you five packages that I use very frequently for the work that I do. And if you find cool packages, by all means, share in the comments some things that you like and I might even make a follow-up video one day that talks about not only how to extend Atom with some of the functionality you've seen here, but maybe look at other code editors. You know, I do like other coders as well, like I've used Sublime, TextMate, Coda, VS Code, Visual Studio, all of these things. And I might even make future videos that kind of talk about how you can configure those editors and IDEs to make your web development life a little bit easier. So with that, if you want to learn more, go to coop.com. There's a whole lot of content related to you know, web development in general and some stuff on IDEs as well. You might like it. If you need any help, the easiest way is to post the forums at forum.coop.com where I or someone else who really cares a lot about code editors would be happy to chime in and help answer any questions you might have. And of course, you can always reach me directly at Krupa on Twitter, on Facebook, and YouTube. I try to be pretty responsive, but if I'm not, the forums is the easiest way to get a hold of me. And if you like this video, by all means, tell your friends and enemies. They, you know, I think everyone should know how to configure a code editor that suits their needs. And you know, everyone needs to benefit from it, even people you do not like. And hit subscribe if you found this video to be good. The more subscribers I have, the more likely it is that winter might be delayed. It might be summer for a little bit longer. And that's a good thing, depending on which part of the world you're in and what kind of seasons you prefer. I'm a big fan of summer, so subscribe, more subscribers, longer summer, great. And follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And if you are one of those people that likes videos, likes reading stuff on a screen, but might prefer reading a book with pay actual pages from dead trees or even a Kindle, which is like a virtual tree kind of thing, then by all means buy a book. You know, one of my favorite books is one I've written recently called JavaScript Absolute Beginner's Guide kind of biased there, but you can buy any book that kind of suits your needs. With that, I'm going to see you all next time.